There it is. So I have a new random book. It's called 1,100 Crazy uh, Random Facts. Here's the first one. The category is airplanes and airports. For a 10-hour trip, a Boeing 747 uses 39,000 gallons of fuel. That's 150,000 liters on average. This means the plane needs a gallon, four liters, for every second that it's in the air. Ah, unbelievable. This is even, I looked this up. The largest plane in the Air Force is the Lockheed Martin C-5. And now they have a Lockheed Martin C-5 Super Galaxy. That's the latest model. It's large enough to transport entire submarines. <laughs> I looked that thing up. And it's the front nose comes up. So the front nose comes up and they drive things in and you can see the cockpit. As it's not, they don't load it from the back. Unbelievable. The Airlander 10 is the largest airship of the world, measuring 92 meters. That's 301 seven feet long. It's filled with almost 1,300,000 cubic feet of helium and can reach an altitude of 2.9 miles. The airship has been nicknamed as the Flying Bum, and it can remain in the sky for up to five days. Wow. That's big. I've always been enthralled with with uh, planes and, and read about, you know, I lived in North Carolina and, of course, the Wright brothers and all that. And by the way, the Wright brothers were operating on their own. The government hired the best person and he had the best people on more money than the Wright brothers and they failed and the Wright brothers succeeded. And you can look that up. That, that's a fact. Another failed government program. <laughs> I about fell over. I had no idea. I thought just the Wright brothers were onto this thing, you know, and I, I, they owned a bicycle shop. So how they went from let's ride a bicycle to let's fly a plane. Pretty good stuff. So we're going to be in Second Kings, Second Kings, chapter nineteen, and um, so the he's being threatened. The king is being threatened, and and I love this. Uh, the he says they told him this is what Hezekiah says. This day is a day of distress and rebuke, disgrace, and as when children come to a moment of birth, there is no strength to deliver him. May be that the Lord your God will hear all the words of the field commander whom his master king is Syria has sent to ridicule the living God. So this messenger comes from the king of Syria and is ridiculing the living God. When King Hezekiah's officials came to Isaiah, so Isaiah obviously is a living prophet during the time of this distress for Hezekiah. Isaiah said to them, tell your master, this is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid of what you have heard. Those words with, with which the underlings of the king of Syria have blasphemed me. Listen, when he hears a certain report, I will make him want to return to his own country, his own country, and there I will have him cut down with the sword. When the field commander heard that the king of Syria had left Lachish, he withdrew and found the king fighting against Libna. And, and so everything that, that had been said by Isaiah comes true, okay? Um, because then he, he gets another report, and, and this is where I really want to focus. So this is leading up to this. Hezekiah received the letter from the messengers and read it. It was a disturbing report. Then he went up to the temple of the Lord and spread it out before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed to the Lord, Lord, the God of Israel, and throne between the cherubim, you alone are God over all the kingdoms of earth. You have made heaven and earth. Give ear, Lord, and hear. Open your eyes, Lord, and see. Listen to the word Sennacherib has sent to ridicule the living God. It is true, Lord, that the Assyrian kings have laid waste these nations and their lands. They have thrown their gods into the fire and destroyed them. For they were not gods, but only wood and stone fashioned by human hands. 
Now, Lord, our God, deliver us from his hands so that all the kings of the earth may know that you alone, Lord, are God. So Isaiah prophesied Sennacherib's fall. Then Isaiah, son of Amos, Am, Amos, sent a messenger, Hezekiah. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. I've heard your prayer concerning Sennacherib, king of Assyria. This is what the word of the Lord has spoken against him. And so I want you to see this interaction, okay? There's, there's this messenger from Assyria that comes in and gives these bad reports. That's ridiculing the living God. Hezekiah, good king, like he isn't liking it. So now the prophet Isaiah, he's doing the right thing. He's listening to prophet Isaiah because the prophet Isaiah is a spokesperson for God and he isn't against God and he isn't, he isn't a false prophet. And so this beautiful interaction between the king, the prophet as God speaks to him, and, and the attacker, okay? The one who serves for false gods. And God ended up delivering them from, from this king, Assyria. Matter of fact, Judah didn't get taken by Assyria. Eventually it was Babylon. But it was Assyria knocking at the door this time. And God uh, did exactly what he said he was going to do through the prophet Isaiah. So, you, okay, let's look at this again. You got the king, uh, king Hezekiah. Okay, here, you got the prophet here, and you got the the attacker over here. Is that going on in your life? Do do you see you as king? Uh, you're not king Hezekiah, but you you are being attacked by somebody. And and what we do a lot of times is go to other people and talk about it. And I like it that Hezekiah went to the temple and spread out his request to the Lord and repeated and said, this is what's being said to us. And that's where Isaiah says, you know, I've heard, he's speaking for God, I've heard your prayer. Sometimes we run to people. I remember one time I was having a problem. I always got a problem. There's always something going on. And I called four people. I'm in my car. Hey, call so-and-so. No answer. Hey, call so-and-so. No answer. Hey, call so and so. No answer. And and I realized that I was driving a car and no one answered that I was supposed to talk to God, which I found fascinating that it took four failed phone calls for me to figure out I was to be talking to God. And that's all I'm saying to you. What you get from this text, and Hezekiah is setting, setting the bar pretty high, is when you're being attacked, when there's a circumstance beyond your control. Now, obviously, I mean, People can be killed. He can be killed. His people can be killed. This is was not an easy situation. So just remember, go to God first. Go to God first. And I'll be tempted today with something not to go to God first. So just go to God first. Let's have a word of prayer. Lord, thank you so much for this day. Help us be more like King Hezekiah. Thank you. You delivered Judah, that, that good things came to them for a while. And I pray, Father, you would help us to obey you, love you and obey you in Christ's name. Amen.